Today we're going to be talking about angles. A quick little spelling tip for the people who have trouble spelling. How do you spell angle? L goes before E because L is a right angle. And we'll talk about that later. Or E goes before L for angel because E is in the word heaven and angels are in heaven if you believe in that. But that's my corny little trick in how I learn how to spell angle. Remember, L before E because L is a right angle. Now, what is an angle? Well, it's formed by two rays with the same endpoint. That's what it is. The rays end up being the sides, and the end point is called its vertex. Maybe you've heard of that before, but that's its vertex. So how are we going to name angles? Well, here I have a diagram. I have this angle right here. Well, I can name it first by its vertex. Its vertex would be its end point from up here, so it would be angle A. Or I can name it by a point on each ray and vertex. That's basically wrapping around the vertex. So I could say, uh, sorry, la slow down, angle BAC or angle CAB. Those are the ways named by a point on each ray and vertex. Or I can name it by a number. As you see here, the number is one. That would be angle number one, so angle one. Those are our three ways, by vertex, point on each ray and vertex, and by number. Okay. Definitely know number two because you'll see situations where we have to name it that way. So, there we go. Here you have an example down below on your paper. I suggest you stop the video and try on your own, but I will go through the answers. What are the names for angle one here? Well, I could say angle JMK and angle KMJ. The question is, can I say angle M for that one? We'll see in a second. We're going to keep going. Number two, names for angle KML. That's this angle right here. Well, I could say angle LMK or by its number, angle two. Finally, right here in bold, I said no angle M. For this picture, like I said before, I warned you, you cannot name it by its vertex only because as you see here, this vertex has two angles within it. So I can't just say angle M. If you're not being specific enough, you gotta tell me which one you're talking about. Now we're going to move on to the types of angles. Now this should be a review, so I'm only going to go through it briefly, but here's our four types of angles. We have an acute angle, we have a right angle, we have an obtuse angle, and we have a straight angle. An acute angle is less than 90. This is this says x degrees. That's our degree symbol just like with the weather. That's how we measure angles. So an acute angle is between 90 degrees. It does not equal zero and it does not equal 90. It's between zero and 90. So it could be one degrees, 89 degrees. That's an acute angle. A right angle, you know it's a right angle but by this symbol. I know it's a question on your sheet. That's the symbol for right angle. That's how we know a right angle. It's exactly 90 degrees. So as soon as you hear right angle, you got to think 90. Right angle, 90 degrees. Obtuse. Obtuse angle is greater than 90 but less than 180. So it's between 90 and 180. It could be 91 degrees, it could be 179 degrees. So just make sure it's greater than 90 but less than 180. Then we hit another special one. Excuse me, hit 180 degrees or a straight line because it's called a straight angle. It's 180 degrees. So from here to here is 180 degrees. That's an important one. The straight angle, 180 degrees. You'll see that down the road. That was our types of angles. Now we're going to move on to something a little bit different to get us back on track. This is called a congruence symbol. You need to learn to love this symbol. I will use this symbol from here on out. I don't want to write out the word congruence. It's too long. This is my symbol. I'm going to use it. Versus equals. Equality. What's the difference between a congruence and equality? Well first, a congruence, it deals with shapes and sizes. Whereas equality deals with the relationships of sizes. That may not make sense, so let's, I want to just at the heart of it tell you right now. When you think of equality, think of numbers. How they relate to each other. Does five equal five? Yes. Congruence. Shapes. You do not, sh you do not say shapes equal each other. You don't say that cube equals that cube. That box equals that cube. No, we're going to say that that cube is 
congruent to that shape. That line is congruent to that line. That plane is congruent to that plane, etc. When we say shapes, we're going to be using congruence. Building on congruence, we then go into bisectors. The word bisector, again a root, bi means two. Now a bisector breaks something in two, and it breaks up into two congruent parts. Hence why I brought up the congruence. It breaks it up into two congruent parts. So here, I have two examples of an angle bisector. What they are, in this example, ray BC would be the angle bisector. As you see here, ray BC cuts this angle directly in half. And we show this by, we have 20 degrees and 20 degrees here, they're the same amount. That's how we know the group. Or we have these arcs. You, usually, we like shortcuts, like I said, the symbol for congruence. This is how we know two angles are congruent. So let's go over here. I don't have any numbers here. So how are we going to know if they're congruent or not? My arcs. It matters the number of the arcs. Not how they look compared to each other, but the number of arcs. Since each one has two arcs, I know that they're congruent. So I can say that, put it in blue to match it, that ray FG is an angle, angle bisector. Once again, let's go through it real quick. An angle bisector breaks an angle into two equal parts. So ray BC breaks this part into two equal parts, so it's an angle bisector. And FG would be an angle bisector because it breaks this angle into two equal parts. Just used the wrong word. It breaks up into two congruent parts. We just talked about it. I used the wrong word. Sorry. Got to get used to it. Congruency. Two congruent parts. Segment bisector. Same concept, but now we're not dealing with an angle anymore. We're dealing with a segment. Here we have segment AB. Now, like before, when we use the arcs for the, the angles, we're going to use these little hash marks to tell me that this segment is congruent to this segment. So I could say that A, segment AC is congruent to segment CB because of these hash marks. That's how I know. Down here, if I put numbers, then I know that they're congruent. Because they have this says 5 and this says 5 talking about the length, I know that segment DE is congruent to segment EF. Now a special vocab it seems kind of common sense, but I'm still going to say it, and it, it will kind of make sense. Midpoint. All midpoint is an abbreviation for middle point. It is a point exactly in the middle of a segment. So C would be a midpoint, and E is a midpoint. So that wraps up our angles. We went through the types of angles, congruence versus equality, angle bisectors, segment bisectors, and how, of course how to name angles. On your sheet, you now have a couple of algebra problems, algebra problems relating to bisectors. Make sure that you are effectively moving the variables across the equation and canceling out. Remember, be careful with your negatives. We will check them over tomorrow. Hopefully, you get them all correct.